Hi, it's Matthew Reed here from How to Repair Pendulum Clocks with another Workshop Techniques video. Over the past couple of years or so on this and my other channels, uh, we talked quite a bit about the anchor recoil escapement as used in clocks. Well, today we're going to talk about the dead beat escapement and try and demystify it a little bit. So, as always, if you like the content, like and subscribe, put any comments below, and there's always super thanks as well. Look forward to seeing you at the end of the video. So here we have our late 19th, early 20th century uh, German wall clock movement, weight driven, as you can see with the uh, rack striking, Harrison's maintaining power on the going train, and a deadbeat escapement. When we remove the crutch, the pallet arbor and pallets, we can see that uh, there are a couple of issues facing our repair that we might want to address. The first of those is that the front pallet arbor pivot at some time has been broken off and a new one has been fitted um, by soft soldering. Now I uh, must point out that this clock has been running fine for 25 years or something so um, yeah. Uh, there's an imperative to um, maybe improve this situation but as I said the clock is running fine as it is. The second um, area of interest as far as this video is concerned are the pallets themselves. So these deadbeat pallets are adjustable they're not part of the pallet frame uh, like some clocks uh, which is great because it means we can take them out and uh, in this case replace one and um, we can also uh, adjust the escapement without bending the pallet frame. When we uh, remove the pallets we can see that one of them although it doesn't look uh, amazing appears to be the original one and the other is uh, a less well-made replacement and um, we can see uh, the impulse plane of the pallet face has kind of been relatively roughly filed. So as I said again the clock has been running fine but I decide uh, partly as an exercise and partly because um, I think that situation can be improved uh, to make a new one. So the deadbeat escapement gets its name from these two faces which are a constant radius from the pallet arbor. Uh, they're sometimes called the resting uh, surface or face, uh, sometimes called the dead face or sometimes called the locking face. Whatever you call them, it doesn't matter. The point is that they are a constant radius from the pallet arbor. And then there are two other distinct planes, and these are the impulse faces. So uh, the uh, escape wheel tooth lands on one of the resting faces, supplementary arc or overswing as some people call it, takes place, then there's impulse drop and the process repeats itself. So here's the same arrangement from a slightly different view 
we have the um, escape wheel tooth landing on our exit face. We have um, supplementary arc or overswing. The pallet then uh, slips down the impulse plane, pushing the pallets out of the way, and the um, escape wheel tooth lands on the uh, other pallet. Uh, I like to actually think that there's only one escape wheel tooth uh, here. It kind of keeps it more simple um, conceptually. So, very typically, the uh, value for the escape wheel tooth landing on the pallets is half a degree struck from the pallet arbor uh, on the locking face. Now, having the pallet, now having the escape wheel tooth landing further on the resting face um, doesn't really give you any advantage. Um, so, some safe locking uh, is necessary, um, but some is all you need. I'm going to just talk a little bit about drop, because drop in the uh, deadbeat escapements often uh, misunderstood, I think. So if we look at the thickness of the pallet, or the depth of the pallet, um, and the uh, inevitable sort of uh, land on the end of the escape wheel tooth, we can see that um, a certain amount of drop is necessary. But once you've made your escapement, there is not a lot you can do about the overall value of drop. If your clock happens to be fitted with some kind of adjustment on the pallet arbor, uh, which this one is, then you can move drop around. You can move it from internal to external, but you cannot increase or decrease it. So what happens as the uh, pallet wears, uh, drop increases, um, and the impulse face also wears away from the other impulse face. So overall, you tend to get a small drop in amplitude of the pendulum, or at least the escaping arc anyway, so the minimum uh, value that the pendulum's got to swing before the clock can actually tick. Now, when this becomes um, extreme, then what happens is the uh, escape wheel tooth begins to land on the impulse face, which, uh, again, typically isn't the end of the world, uh, but it uh, sort of defeats the object of it being a deadbeat escapement. In terms of the uh, angle of the impulse faces, um, it's actually relatively unimportant within reason um, what those angles are. Typically, they're between about 45 and 60 degrees. In our case, they're around 60 degrees. But what is important is that they're the same. If uh, they've either been altered or they're not made the same in the first place, then what happens uh, or what tends to happen is the escape wheel tooth again can land on the impulse face rather than landing on the resting face of the pallet. So uh, yeah, those um, uh, impulse faces should be ground at the same angle. And here is just a little illustration of what happens when the pallet uh, wears. Um, as we discussed, you get um, more drop, so there's more free rotation of the escape wheel and therefore the rest of the train, and you get less uh, impulse. Personally, until this gets bad, I wouldn't worry about it. I certainly uh, tend not to get rid of, or, well, you can't get rid of the wear, uh, but polish out the pallets um, because you don't really achieve anything. All you achieve is um, you're just getting rid of the bits of material on the side. Um, so I, I, if they're moderately worn, personally, I leave them absolutely fine. Uh, as I said, until we get to the point where the, um, the escape wheel tooth is beginning to land on the impulse phase. 
In the case of these pallets, obviously they're adjustable, so you could re-grind or make a new pallet and move them uh, closer together. In the case of solid pallets, then you've got fewer options because you don't want to bend the pallet frame. Don't bend the pallet frame because it disturbs the geometry of the dead or locking faces. So really, um, options with solid pallets are either if you have access to laser welding to build up the worn areas and uh, re-grind them using uh, diamond, or to saw away the entire um, worn part and let in a hardened uh, steel insert, uh, which of course is quite interventive, but at least you do it once and then you, um, every time that wears again, then uh, the same process can be repeated. So on to our actual clock. I'm going to make a new pallet out of uh, ground flat stock or gauge plate as it's sometimes called. And this is an oil hardening uh, high carbon steel, complex steel uh, called a tool steel. Now the, um, the depth of the pallet is about one millimetre and uh, we just happen to have some one millimetre ground flat stock so this is absolutely perfect. It comes in an annealed state, so it's relatively easy to work, and then you harden it, and it hardens incredibly well. So perfect for this job. The, uh, the grinding on the steel when it's um, from the manufacturer is relatively coarse, so I'm just going to um, polish, if you like, some of that away with these uh, diamond laps, just to improve the surface finish. I will then um, mark a strip of material. So there are many ways to make uh, deadbeat pallets, this replacement type. Uh, I've seen it done by making a complete ring of material and then chopping away the bit that you like. Perfectly reasonable way to do it. The way I'm going to do it is a slightly more sort of homespun method and that's to take a strip of material and bend it to shape. So first I uh, saw off some sort of almost random piece of gauge plate and file that roughly uh, smooth at the edges. And then I determine the radius at which the, um, uh, the pallet should be made. So remember, we've got two radii here. We've got the radius of the uh, dead face or the locking face for the exit pallet. And we have the radius for the dead face for the entry pallet. Once I've um, determined that, uh, I just draw those two uh, radii on a bit of paper, which it just happens to be on my bench. And then I'm going to bend um, my piece of material, which I've cut nice and long, uh, to shape, to fit, um, to fit that curve. Once I've done that, I look at the existing palette. I presume it's an original one, maybe it isn't, who knows. Uh, as I said, other than the fact that the clock's been running okay. so uh, And I determine the approximate angle of the impulse of face. As I said, it's about 60 degrees, but I don't really care, to be honest. What I care about is that the one that I make is pretty close to that, so the uh, escape wheel tooth lands on the dead face. And I'm going to just saw that roughly, uh, having scribed it, and file it roughly.
once I've done that and I know that we are getting in the ballpark I'm going to harden uh, this material so I'm going to make this piece of material dead hard that is I'm not going to temper it at all now there's a, an advantage to this in as much as um, that palette will like last for decades if not hundreds of years the disadvantage to it is that if it's handled uh, roughly maybe by me or in future then it could crack I suppose or break but um, anyway I harden it dead hard uh, I could temper it back to straw but I decide to leave it as it is Then I used this uh, homemade uh, bolt tool, which was um, made for me when I was a student as a gift, which is really nice. So nice to use these uh, things. So the bolt tool gets its name from the bolt of watches. And the bolt is the component that holds in the winding stem on older watches. And traditionally these were finished with a black finish, so ground dead flat. And um, it's basically a little tripod and you clamp your bit of metal in there. And here I'm using uh, ceramic stone, so uh, aluminium oxide stone basically, to grind the thing flat. And because the steel is hard, it takes an incredibly high polish with very little rounding at the edges. So once I've done that and got my palette, we're ready to turn our attention to the next uh, repair, which is that pallet arbor. So I'm going to make a completely new pallet arbor. You could drill out the old one and put an insert in and re-pivot it, but I'm just going to make a new one because it's a plain piece of material. So I measure the overall length that's needed and select a piece of blued pivot steel. So this material is a kind of watchmaker's staple. So this material is hardened and tempered back to blue. So kind of ready, uh, ready to use. So I use the watchmaker's lathe to uh, turn first one pivot and then finish that pivot with again an aluminium oxide slipstone. And then I taper the arbor slightly um, for a good fit for the crutch. Once I've done that, I uh, flip it round and do the other end until we have a good amount of end shake. So now we've got our new pallet arbor and our new pallet, I want to uh, set up the escapement and if you have a depthing tool um, then this is incredibly useful for this kind of operation because you can see what you're doing more easily. So I um, set the depthing tool to the centre distance as determined between the escape wheel and the pallet arbor from the frame. And this way I'm able to see very easily the amount of safe locking. And I adjust the uh, pallets, the, the distance between the pallet faces until I have some safe locking. Um, determining half a degree isn't uh, critical. If you have, uh, if the pallets are too close together and you have too much safe locking, what will happen is that the tooth will scrape on the back of the pallet um, when the uh, when the escapement's running. So some is enough is the uh, is the answer here. There's no advantage to having more. And once I've done that, I can put the uh, pallets back in the clock frame with the clock cleaned and assembled. 
obviously if you don't have a depthing tool you just have to carry out this operation in the frame itself and there we are clock is ticking away nicely So there we are. Hope that was of interest. There's much more to say about the deadbeat escapement. If you want to see something else, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget, before you go, like and subscribe. And if you use this content in a wider way or you think it's really useful, there's always super thanks. Thank you and bye for now.